Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to look at Sure Cuts A Lot. I absolutely love this programme. And the next few weeks I'm gonna be doing all about Sure Cuts A Lot and different things you can do in it and how you can work with it. For me, I think it is probably one of the best third party programmes out there. It's super user friendly, it's really affordable, and I just think it's fantastic. I will link to it below. It's not an affiliate link, so I don't earn anything from it, uh, but it's currently reduced in price. And also that um, bundle, uh, you get other things in it. So you get like a $6.99 Dreaming Tree voucher as well. This is so worth it. It's absolutely worth every penny if you are going to be wanting to do a lot of different effects so that you can bring them into design space. So things like shadow layering, uh, knockout, rhinestones, all sorts of different things that you can create and then bring into design space, which you can do in design space, but sometimes they are a little bit tricky. This just makes it so easy. And as I say, it's so user friendly. So we're gonna go over some of the basics first. So when you come into Shakuts a lot, this is what it will look like. And we're gonna start with the document size. So you can see you've got mat size there and it's currently set to 12 by 12. You can actually change the mat size. So you can work 12 by 24 uh, and there's other ones there as well. And you can also do a custom size. I tend to keep it on 12 by 12 and just zoom in. It doesn't really matter what size you make it in your cuts a lot because you can resize it when you bring it into design space. So it's just about working in a space that's workable. And of course, you can zoom in. When you click the zoom in tool, you'll see it comes up here. So we can zoom in and we can zoom out. You can change the orientation from horizontal to portrait and so on and so forth. And you can also work within inches, millimeters and centimeters. You've got grid lines and then there's also things like registration marks, print margins, uh, page colors, and lots of things that you can do to change this. I don't use any of that. I literally have a 12 by 12 mat and then I create. The important thing is that if you are going to export it, so you're going to bring it out of Shakuts a lot to bring it into Design Space, you need to make sure that everything is on this mat. Under Document, you've got Position and Size, so you can position things on the mat. I don't tend to use that. I will manually place them. And the thing is, I can do several things on one mat, and as long as they're all on that mat, I can export them and then bring them into design space. The only thing you have to do is ungroup them. If you've got several things on this mat and you export it as one project, when you bring it into design space, you will need to ungroup them all. You've got the color. Uh, selection here so you can change the colors of your items but again you can do that in design space when you bring it in you've got a style window and then you've got a font window as well this is our selection tool so whenever we want to highlight anything or pick anything up this is the tool you'll need and then we've got things like the type tool, which is for text, you've got drawing, you've got painting, you've got erasing. To be honest, the thing that you're gonna use the most in here is text and images. Those are the things that you're really gonna be working with to start with. You can create designs in Shurkuts a lot, but I find that I'm doing a lot of tweaking to images and fonts and I'm creating effects like knockout, uh, like shadows, like rhinestones, and then I'm bringing them into design space rather than actually designing something from scratch. Something I absolutely love is the library, and this is key. So if we select the library, you'll see that there is three tabs here. We've got shapes, fonts, and projects. So there are basic shapes and images in Shurkuts a lot. And some of these are fantastic. 
and we'll look at these in further videos but for example the hearts and things if you want to do a filled text so you want to do text in the shape of a heart you can use one of these hearts for example to create your text in the shape of a heart which I think is fantastic the fonts is amazing. So in the fonts, this is where you'll find all the characters. So usually if we're in design space and we've got a font that's got lots of beautiful swirls and glyphs, we have to use the character map. In Shakuts a lot, we can use this library here and we can choose any of our fonts that are on our computer and we can open this up and find the glyphs. But you'll find this absolutely invaluable. You can import, so you can bring in JPEG, PNGs and SVGs and in later videos we'll be looking at those. You can trace things as well. We may get into that slightly down the road but for the time being we're going to be focusing on the, the essential things that we want to use this for. And so that doesn't really come into play at the moment but it will do further down the road. What show you today is text. We're going to have a quick play with text just so we can get to grips with it. So first things first, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so I can see a bit better. And as I say, you can move things to this side. So if you find that your mat's getting a little bit crowded, you can move things across. But when it comes to exporting, everything must be on this mat. So I'm going to grab a type tool. And I can choose my font now, or I can choose my font once I've written what I want to write. So first of all, we'll do that. So I'm just going to type in, oh, I don't know. Let's do lovely. So I'm just typing normally. If I want to delete, uh, I get the wrong letter, I can delete it and then do that again. I can change the font. So all I'm going to do is highlight my word and then come down to my fonts and let's search for a font beginning with S and we can then of course choose those fonts and you'll see that our cursive fonts are automatically as they should be which is nice and easy and lovely. There's a couple of ways in which you can change how big your word is. So you can use the selection tool and you can either just drag it out. When you do that though, you can completely change the dimensions of it. So just be aware of that. And you'll see at the moment, it's not currently what we would call welded because we can see that if we just were to bring that in as it is and cut it, we would have all those individual cuts. So we're gonna look at how we can turn that into a solid cut as well. But for the time being, you can either, as I say, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, you can just drag it out. Or if you hold your shift key down and then drag it, it will keep it in perfect proportion. You can, of course, undo if you do anything that you don't want to or you think it doesn't look right. The other thing you can do is change the size in your text tab as well. So we can, of course, use this to make it larger or smaller and it will of course keep it in proportion as well. We can also change the width of our letters. So we can make our letters wider or we can make them skinnier, which I quite like. I think that is quite a, a cool thing to have actually. You can also change how far or how close they are together, the letters, by using the tracking. So we can make them far apart or we can make them overlap. Just like in design space though, when we bring them closer in, you may find that some of your letters are end up how you want them to be and then others can be a little bit further away. So to do that where you can move an individual letter, make sure that your word is obviously selected. We're going to come up to object, which is along the top here, and we're going to select ungroup. 
And when we ungroup it, our letters become individual. And we can then use our arrow key on our keyboard to individually move them. Group them, they become individual letters. So if we were to export this as it is, it would come into design space as you see it, but they would be individual letters. If we didn't ungroup this and we left it as it was and we brought it into design space, they would still be individual letters. So you would still need to attach them or weld them depending on if they were cursive or not. So if you want to bring them in cut ready to design space, all you need to do is draw around them all if you've ungrouped them. And if you haven't ungrouped them, you just select them all. And we then come to path and union. And union is weld. So union is just like welding. And if we now select that, you'll see that before our letters, you could see where they were overlapped. Now they become one. So if you union them in shortcuts a lot, they will come into design space welded. If you don't union them, they'll come into design space grouped, which means you will then need to either attach or weld them. But it does mean that you can ungroup them. So if you want to do more work in design space, keep them ungrouped. So now we're gonna look at how you can work with glyphs. So glyphs are all the hidden characters that you see in a font. So shortcuts a lot will work with any fonts that are in your system. So any fonts that you've installed onto your computer, shortcuts a lot will be able to work with, just like design space. So this time we're gonna get our type tool and we are actually going to use Samantha. So Samantha, if you don't know, is a very popular font. It's a paid for font. It is, and always will be, I think, one of the biggest fonts out there. It's so popular. It's been popular for years, and I think it's never gonna go away. So again, once I've chosen my font, I can put my type tool wherever I want. Just bear in mind that if you've worked on this canvas, it and you've increase the text size using the text box, it will stay like that. So I always bring it back down to one. So actually the first letter I want is going to be a glyph letter. So if I come to my library and I go to fonts and we search under S, you'll see Samantha Upright. You do need to make sure, just like when you're using Character Map, that the font you're using on your mat and the font you're using in the library is the same one because otherwise they won't match up with the glyphs. So if we look through here, we can find all those lovely swirls and glyphs and beautiful characters that we would normally have to go to the Character Map for. So I'm going to choose this B here. So the great thing is I've bought this glyph in, but I can actually write now. So if I just click my keyboard, it won't let me type. I must click that flashing line. Once I've clicked it, I can then start typing. And if I go wrong, I can of course use my backspace. I can add a glyph in at any point. So I'm now gonna find a T that I want to use. Let's try this one. I do like that, but I think I'll do a different one. So again, I can, if I want to, if I want to get rid of that, I just click that line and I can then backspace and I can then add another glyph in. So let's do that one. And again, I want to start typing. So I'm just gonna click that flashing line and I can then type, and of course, I can then add another glyph in. So let's try that one. Beautiful, and of course, if I don't like it, I can just click that line, and I can backspace, and then I can choose a different one. And again, if I want to add more written text to that, I just click that line, and I add it, and if I don't like it, I can backspace. So it's nice and easy 
to work with the glyphs. Once you're happy with your text, you can close the library down and we can then start playing with this. So I'm gonna make it a bit bigger and I'm just gonna hold my shift key down and extend that. And we can see that actually that has come together exactly as we want it to. But if we did have a little bit of work to do, we can of course change the tracking on it so we could make them a bit closer or a bit further apart. And of course, if we wanted to move an individual letter, we would come up to object, ungroup, and we could then click an individual letter and move it closer or further if we wanted to. And then of course we can draw around it all and we can come to path and union and that will weld it together. So I now want to bring this into design space and actually I'm going to do one welded and one not welded. So let's get text again and this time we're going to do it in I love glitter on our mat and I'm going to click there and I'm going to bring my library back and this time I'm going to go to I and we'll see I love glitter and I'm just going to scroll through until I find the glyphs that I want to use so I'm going to start with that one and I'm just gonna click on that flashing line to be able to write my text. So I'm gonna do a capital and then lowercase. And I'm then gonna add that back in. Again, click on that line. I can do a capital and lowercase. And I can then click that again. If I close that down, I can then use my selection tool and again I can change the size by either dragging that out or holding shift and dragging it out to keep the proportion or I can change the size that way. If we look at those they are perfect as they are so I don't need to change the tracking on that but I'm going to leave that exactly how it is. I'm not going to use union, just so you can see the difference when we bring them into design space. So both of these are on my mat. So I can then come up to file and export. It wants to save it as an SVG, so I don't need to change that. I'm just going to give that a name of font upload and save and when I click save it'll come up with the export options the only thing that I need to do is make sure it's design space compatible so it will come up with that clicked but just make sure it's ticked and then select OK that's now saved into my pictures as an SVG so we can then open up design space once design space is open we can go to upload upload image, browse, we can choose our SVG file, open, you can give it a name and a tag and then save, we can then select that file and insert to canvas. So when we bring it in, because they're on the same canvas, they're currently grouped together. So all we need to do is ungroup them. Now I unioned this one, so it's going to come into design space completely ready to cut. I won't be able to make a lot of changes to that. I will be able to change the size and I will be able to change the dimensions on it, but I won't be able to change anything unless I slice it or I contour it. This one, however, because I didn't use union, it's come in, although it's grouped together, they are individual cuts. So if I ungroup it, I can select individual letters. Because it's cursive and I don't want to add anything to it, I can simply weld that together. If you attach a cursive font, you will still get 
the join of the cut so you'll end up with all your joins being cut whereas if you weld it it's one complete cut so if you bring in a font that's not got the letters overlapping then you can either just attach it or you can use union inch a cuts a lot if it's cursive like this you will e need to either union it whilst it's in shortcut slot in which case it will come in like this or you leave it as it is so that you can change it in design space and then before you go to cut you simply weld there you go that is now a solid cut and we can now go and cut both of those in whatever material we want to cut them in. I hope that this has helped as a starting block. I find your cuts a lot so easy to work with, it's super user friendly. In the next tutorial we'll be looking at how you can create shadow layers on fonts which is great because there's a lot that you can do with shadow layers so we'll be looking at those in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped. Please do subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them below. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.